Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. We've got some awesome community posts this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Ruth Pozuelo over at the Kerbal YouTube channel has got a video looking at context transition from a DAX perspective. This is a topic that is hard to understand. It goes along with evaluation context, filter context, row context, understanding context transitions and how they occur. She breaks down what this is and how to consider what's going on. This is really one of those areas where if you figure this out, Power BI is going to get a lot easier for you. And so this video is a great stepping stone to get you on your journey into understanding this complex topic. So definitely check it out. I got a link up here and then I've got links for all the items down in the description below, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Sam McKay over at the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel has got a video looking at how do we mask data inside of Power BI. Now you may be thinking like, whoa, is there a new feature that came out? And the answer there is no, but what he walks through are some things to consider in terms of anonymizing your data to remove some of that personally identifiable information. And so there's some techniques in Power Query that he walks through that you can employ to help mask that data. I actually learned a few things just going through this video and so it was an interesting topic and I get asked this question every once in a while. So I just wanted to call that out in this week's roundup because it is something you can consider to help with that effort. Again, I got a link up here for that video. Yos from Denmark is doing some Power BI quizzes on his YouTube channel every week. They're on Wednesdays at one o'clock central time. They are at, let me do the math, 11 a.m. Pacific and 3 p.m., no, 2 p.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, and then you'll have to do the math on your own if you're outside of the U.S. These quizzes are really fun. I've really enjoyed watching the different ones. I did one on gateways. Uh, Marco Russo was in there talking about some DAX stuff. Chris Webb was in there talking about some power query. This week was Reed Havens talking about some visualization things and just items inside a Power BI desktop. And then Asger from Iceland will be doing one next week. So definitely check them out. They're only usually about a half hour. The comments are great. And also just testing your knowledge on given areas is always a way that you can improve your knowledge in a fun way. Some of these you may actually have to go to the search engine of your choice to figure out, but when you go to Bing, just type in type in the items, right? And you'll figure it out. All right, I got a link up here. And again, links down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. Again, go check it out. Megan Lagoria has got a blog post around a tweet that she sent out with a picture of a graph asking people to interpret what was going on in that graph. And the responses she got were very telling and she wrote a blog post about those responses and really to get you thinking about what are your graphs or charts actually showing people and communicating. So this ranged from the access to just people guessing as to what was going on, basically indicating there wasn't enough information to really understand. And then also trying to explain, okay, it jumped up, but why did it actually keep at that level? So a lot of people had some guesses, but there just wasn't enough information. The comments also help to explain things you can do to improve your readability of your charts and graphs. And then at the end, she does really explain what was the story behind this graph. So it's actually pretty awesome and you can check it out. I won't spoil it for you. So when you're designing your reports and your visuals, be sure to keep these types of things in mind and try to understand what is it you're trying to convey to your report consumers and shape that story for them. Chris Webb's got a blog post around Power Query performance. This is actually part two, talking about merges and what will actually happen. And this blog post went through answering the question of like, okay, I need to remove some columns. Is it better to remove it before the merge or 
after the merge. And he went through and tried it, right? So he went and got some data and he looked at the timings and compared the two to see what the actual result will be. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You gotta go read the blog post to figure out what the answer to that is. It was interesting and I actually guessed wrong on it. So uh, I was, it was when I saw the actual answer, I was like, huh, that's interesting. So Power Query is pretty cool. So if you're curious about what that performance would look like before or after, make a guess and then go read the blog post and see if you're right. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.